Hello technical knowledge seekers, hope you are doing well and as always if you are new to my channel, I would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel so that you shall be able to see all the latest engineering videos that I will upload on my channel. Thanks a lot. Uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, generalized Hooke's law in 3D. Okay. So, in order to understand this concept of generalized Hooke's law in 3D, it is very important that we have already done in our practical lab about a tensile test that we have performed on our universal testing machine. Okay. In that, in that test, if you remember, we have basically applied stresses on the, our uh, specimen along the y axis and our specimen has basically increased and that increase has constant consequently resulted in a decrease along the uh, y and, uh, and the x axis because uh, the stresses are being applied along the y axis and then we have basically performed uh, uh, elongation of this specimen till failure and we have also plotted our stress strain curve in that experiment okay but remember in the real world the stresses on any specimen are not, not only applied along one axis but there can be scenarios in which the stresses can be applied along the x axis along the y axis there can also be systems of loading in which stresses can be applied along the x axis y axis and z axis which is a kind of a complex loading so we shall be very much interested that what will be the hooks law if the stresses are being applied along the x along the x axis along the y, along the x axis along the y axis and the z axis and when we say stresses are being applied we will know with every stress applied along any axis there will be strains generated as a result of that stress okay so we will be starting it in a very simple way and we will consider uh, our uh, cube which is being over here and our cube is basically being uh, the stress is being applied along the x axis and that stress is basically sigma x okay now when we apply this stress you will see that this because of this stress this cube will be elongated uh, it's very simple and you can easily understand it but along with this elongation you will see that uh, this uh, cube will basically get uh, contracted along the y axis and along the z axis and you can see in this picture over here uh, which we show you here that uh, because of this stress because of this stress this cube is basically being contracted along the z axis here and it is also being contracted along the y axis thus following uh, the Poisson's ratio effect over here as a result of the contraction this type of a contraction is basically called as uniaxial uh, uh, contraction okay because uh, this contraction is being performed and being generated as a result of this stress along the x axis okay now let us under try to understand what will happen if basically the stresses are being applied along the x axis the stresses are also being applied along the y axis and the stresses are also being applied on the z axis okay so once this happens basically it will be basically this is the stress this will be the when the stress is applied along the x axis the strains generated will basically be sigma x upon e minus nu upon e sigma y plus sigma z when stresses are being applied along the y axis the strains generated will be sigma y upon e minus uh, nu upon e sigma z plus sigma x and when the stresses are being applied along the z axis the strain generated will be sigma z upon e minus nu upon e sigma y plus sigma z okay so once this is being done this is will be called as the uh, the strains uh, as triaxial strains because uh, these strains are being generated as a result of stresses along the x axis along the y axis and along the z axis okay and uh, uh, to understand it further we can basically proceed uh, to understand is that here if you look at it we have basically uh, the strains are being generated mechanical strains will be strains due to the mechanical loading in the x direction this is our x direction 
and because of this uh, stresses along the x-axis we will have the strain generated along the x-axis as sigma x upon e and when we go for y and z you can see there will be contractions and the strains along the y-axis will be new new times of epsilon x and which will basically can be represented as minus new sigma x upon e and then we can also say that uh, the strains along the z-axis will be minus new epsilon x and it can be basically be, uh, represented as minus new sigma x upon e because all these strains which are being generated are because of this uh, stress sigma x okay now we consider another uniaxial case in which the stresses are applied along the y axis when these stresses are applied along the y axis uh, we will have basically the strain generated along the y axis as sigma y upon e but there will be consequently contraction along the x axis and the z axis which will be represented as minus new epsilon y along the z axis minus new epsilon y in terms of stresses it will be minus new sigma y upon e minus new sigma y upon e okay so uh, we have understood this now if we consider only the stresses applied along the z axis so the strain generated will be sigma z upon e but there will be contraction along the x axis and the y axis so the strains as a result of this will be minus new epsilon z which can be represented as minus new sigma z upon e because remember stress equals to e times epsilon so strain will basically be equals to sigma z upon e and epsilon y will be again minus new sig epsilon z and it will be equals to minus new sigma z upon e okay but if we are to basically consider all these three stresses simultaneously on the cube uh, then basically uh, the strains generated will be simply this strains along the x axis will be sigma x upon e minus nu upon e sigma y and minus nu upon e sigma z nu upon e if you simply multiply this nu upon e with them the strains generated along the y axis will be sigma y upon e minus nu upon e sigma z plus sigma x and the strains generated along the z axis will be sigma z upon e minus nu upon e sigma y plus sigma z okay so basically this is understood now this is basically uh, our mechanical strains sometimes sometimes what happens that uh, these normal strains and 3d are uh, can be also be represented as uh, sigma x upon e minus new sigma y upon e minus new sigma z upon e but the strains are uh, these are the mechanical strains but there can also be thermal strains on this system of cube we have if we consider the effect of thermal strains we can al uh, along the x y and z we can also add this factor of alpha delta t alpha delta t and alpha delta 3 ups on epsilon x epsilon y and epsilon z okay if there are no thermal strains this factor will be zero but if there are thermal strains effect included we will add uh, alpha delta t alpha delta t and alpha delta t remember this alpha is coefficient of linear expansion and delta t is the change in temperature uh, uh, as a result of uh, the thermal uh, strains okay so uh, these strains are uh, shown over here to you epsilon x epsilon by epsilon z but if we are interested in what will be the uh, stresses uh, as are in 3d so what we can do we can uh, these normal strains in 3d of a generalized hooke's law could be inverted to obtain stresses in terms of strains okay we can obtain the uh, stresses that what will be the uh, stress uh, along the x axis in 3d uh, hooke's law what will be the stress along in the y axis in Hooke's law 3D and what will be the stress sigma z in Hooke's law for 3D. So we could invert these three equations for epsilon x, epsilon y, and epsilon z to get stresses in 3D. So if we do that, which could easily be done if you in Excel, if you want to do, you can easily uh, convert these equations and uh, basically simplify them and you will get your sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z as this. Okay, sigma x will be equals to e upon 1 plus nu into 1 minus 2 nu bracket open 1 minus nu epsilon x plus nu sigma epsilon y plus epsilon z the stresses along the y axis 
will be in 3D will be e upon 1 plus nu 1 minus 2 nu bracket open 1 minus nu epsilon y plus nu epsilon z plus epsilon x and sigma z will be equals to e upon 1 plus nu into 1 minus 2 nu into again the same 1 minus nu epsilon z plus nu epsilon x epsilon y. So, this is a very important uh, uh, equations whenever you want to consider stresses in 3D uh, for Hooke's law. Okay. So, now you know what will be the stresses on your uh, three dimensional uh, systems uh, for Hooke's law and you also have understood and studied what will be the normal strains in 3D when uh, basically uh, for a, a three dimensional uh, Hooke's law or generalized Hooke's law which are these equations. Okay. So, I hope you have understood this uh, and uh, this is basically all about uh, uh, Hooke's law in 3D. I thank you all and I hope you have a, a very good day and best of luck. Thanks.